The Supreme Court has affirmed Senate President Ahmed Lawan as the All Progressive Congress APC senatorial candidate for Yobe North. In a majority judgment delivered on Monday, the Apex Court allowed the appeal filed by the APC gov uh, against Bashir Machina's candidature. Now, delivering the judgment, three out of a five member panel agreed with the position of the APC that the suit at the trial court ought not to have commenced via an originating summons since it contained allegations of fraud. The justice also noted that INEC was absent and did not monitor the June 9 election. Machina won unopposed during the senatorial primary organized by the party in May of 2022. But the Senate president was said to have participated in another primary organized by the APC after he contested for the presidential ticket unsuccessfully in June. Lawan in Abuja today commended the judiciary for strengthening democracy, stating that the ruling showed that democracy is still at work. Well, joining us to break this down is Opunabo Inko Tyre. He is a public affairs analyst. It's so good to have you join us, Mr. Tyre. Uh, thank you. I'm good to be I think the last, uh, we have had a conversation uh, when Machina was uh, finally uh, accepted as the preferred candidate uh, for that ticket um, sometime last year. But here we are again, and now the Supreme Court is saying that the Senate president um, is good to go and will be running for that ticket on the platform of the All Progressive Congress. Let's walk back to what happened. Um, and this is almost the same for the case of Governor, uh, former Governor Goswami Lubudakwabi, who is now holding the Senate ticket uh, for Akwaibom State. And... Um, have, uh, most of them, in fact, um, had attended these primaries in absentia using placeholders. And now with this judgment, where does this um, point the average Nigerian to, especially with our elections just down the road? Yes, yeah, so thank you, Marianne. Uh, let me start by saying it's a dark day in the history of our judiciary and the pollution of our political permanence. I was really dazed by the judgment, I must tell you. Uh, but uh, it was Justice Robert Jacks who said, is it Jacks or Jackson, who said, the Supreme Court is final. Not final because it is infallible. It is uh, infallible because it is final. In other words, once the Supreme Court decides on the matter, it's best to be captured. You, you, unless you appeal to God. And most times you get judgment from God on the day of judgment. Judgment Day, not even while you're still alive. But I can tell you now that what happened is miscarriage of justice. It is what is called in law par inquiria. It is judgment par inquiria. The Electoral Act is loose. Section 115, especially 115D, is loose. It says you cannot, you are interdicted. You cannot participate, uh, pick, uh, assign a nomination from two different nomination forms in a particular election. In fact, it goes to, it went ahead to prescribe the penalty for doing that an imprisonment, two years imprisonment and fine if you flout that search. Now you have the Senate President, who signed the nomination form for the presidency, I mean, for the uh, presidential primaries. Mm -hmm. the, the primaries, the APC had its National Assembly primaries in May. Lawan was not an aspirant as at that time. It was also supervised by INEC. Now, the presidential primary came up in June. Going by section 115 of the electoral Act 105D, it is a crime malum for him to tomb for the uh, senior president to have said the, or to have ever claimed that he picked the nomination form for, even if it is in June. Let us assume without conceding that that of May was cancelled, but it was not cancelled. At no point did they say it was cancelled. Let us even assume that the party went ahead to conduct another one in June. 
the Senate president cannot go by that 115D, cannot participate in any other election in 2023. He cannot. He has been indicted from so doing for participating in the presidential primaries. If you also go back to the Supreme Court judgment, the racial dissidentity, the reason for the price, reason for which they get that judgment, the premise for which they get that judgment, I align with the dissenting two justices of the Supreme Court. The other ones went into the issue of, which was technical, the issue of jurisdiction, no doubt. Jurisdiction is key. In fact, it's a precondition in any trial because it is the, uh, the, it, it, it is on that stress is the adjudicating competence on which the right of a court rests. It is that jurisdiction that gives the court the right to try a case. So it is paramount, no doubt about that. And what is the reason? It came by originating summons, which means it could have been breach of summons and not originating summons. That is the argument of the uh, three Supreme Court justices. I dissent. Why do I dissent? It's simple. You have Section 115D of the Electoral Act that clearly states that you cannot sign two nomination forms. What is an issue is not whether Lao and won the primaries or not. What is an issue is not whether uh, there was over voting during the primaries or not, where you have to bring people so that you can get oral evidence. That is not what is an issue. Mm -hmm. What is an issue is eligibility of Lawan to contest that election. Hmm. He's not eligible, going by 115, because he has, which means, for what the Supreme Court is saying, is, is that the judgment of Supreme today, it has invalidated that section 115. Okay. Inadvertently. Okay. Because you cannot sign to the nation of water, you have a precedent. You can sign the judgment of today. Let and me, the elector has said no. So what is an issue is not whether he won at the primaries or not. What is an issue is that he is not eligible. Okay. That is what is an issue. And that is why the other two dissenting judges said no. And when if that is the issue, then it should come by originating someone. Let's talk, let's, 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 let's talk about let's 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 talk about INEC. The let's construction of the law. That is what the means by rejecting someone. Yeah, open up, but let's talk about INEC. The law the way it is. Point noted. Right? Point noted. Let's talk about INEC. Many have dragged INEC into this conversation. In fact, it's now part of the blame game. Could INEC also be sanctioned or I mean because I mean this 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 judgment is already what it is. Um, but many have said that INEC being that they had um, known prior to now that the Senate president had picked a form for the presidency, uh, for the presidential, um, you know, um, primaries, and also picked a form uh, for the Senate, it should have um, used one of, you know, one way or the other to disqualify either of and given him an option. This is, this is what some pundits are saying. But again, can we really blame INEC for lack of enforcement? INEC is just an umpire, but then we have law enforcement, people who are supposed to interpret what is in the Electoral Act and make sure that people are prosecuted one way or the other. Should, should we be leaving um, this particular issue at the feet of INEC? Yes, to some extent. Because INEC is stacked with INEC, because it is INEC that sells the form. Now, you have bought, uh, you did not buy the form, you bought the presidential, the party's presidential nomination form. You lost. You are going back to buy a nomination form for the Senate. INEC has already supervised the main primaries. So it is within the cognizance of INEC that the National Assembly uh, uh, primaries for APC have been conducted. 
Mm. I don't see any reason why, under any guise, INEC should allow, even when the party, or should the party conduct another primary because of the gravitas of the sitting president, his cloud, even if the party should conduct another primary in June and send the name to INEC, INEC should so much say, no, we already have a name from this. And apart from that, this man contested the electoral at his death. This man contested in the presidential primaries. Therefore, after the reliance upon section 115, he can no longer contest for the Senate. It is simple. And so we I will not recognize it. Then the onus will now be on the Senate president to take INEC to court and not for INEC to recognize him. Because this has gone beyond what you say party uh, for politics, that it is intra party. We are talking of the electoral act here. So if INEC cannot hide under the guise of intra party, it cannot. So INEC is also complicit. I see some level of conspiracy against Machina, probably because it doesn't have the clout. And we expected the sagacity to prevail from the courts. Unfortunately, 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 the court, the Supreme Court justices, those three justices of the Supreme Court have failed Nigerians mm. because this is a prescription of anarchy. Tomorrow, somebody will buy governorship form and when he loses, will buy House of Reps form or Senate form. And you have precedents. Mm. It's a case of state assistance. There's precedent. It's yeah. there. There's nothing you can do about it. But then we've also had but, three. We have we've had three three known cases. But the issue I mean, of technicality, the issue of uh, doesn't even arise. The man is not even competent to challenge this in court. Now, it is simple. Uh, this raises another question as to how. What sh how do we trust INEC enough to have free, fair, credible elections? Uh, I mean, I know it's too late in the day for us to ask that question because elections are about 19 days away. Uh, but this, this, this is a case for the governor of Cross River State, Benedict Tayade, who also did the same thing. He ran for the president's, uh, presidential um, you know, primaries in APC, also came back and picked a senatorial um, you know, ticket and won. Uh, we've seen that for Gospel Lock Party. We've seen that for the Senate president. We've seen that INEC has allowed this placeholder thing to hold sway, whether it's debatable or not. This is the situation of things. Who's to say, just as you said, that there's not going to continuously be this same kind of president? Because, of course, people will now make reference, if they're arguing in, arguing in court, to this Supreme Court judgment. Um, by the um, Senate, I mean, for the Senate president. And finally, because we're, we're getting out, going out of time, uh, quickly, the situation of the judiciary, a lot of people have asked that, um, is it that we're losing it because the average person would say the judiciary is the last hope of the common person, but that seems to be fading away. So again, um, what does this say about our judiciary going forward? Many people have also said that our judiciary might be responsible for our electoral woes and hence um, the problems that we've had with um, harmonizing our electoral calendar. Are we going to see more of this happening after 2023? Or is something going you to see, change? It, it is, yes, it is, it, is, it is also niggling at my mind because um, the judiciary, ordinarily, which have less cases, in court when it comes to electoral matters. Because we are actually divested. What we are doing is giving the courts our right to vote who we want. Just like the Lawrence case now. APC members, the they voted for somebody else and the court is imposing somebody else on, 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 on the party and on by extension the people. And I pray that he loses at the, at, at the general election. So it will teach people a lesson. But you see, the truth is, the courts, it all depends. Of course, there are judges of rectitude, upright judges. No doubt about them. But you also have the corrupt ones in the system. And that is the, 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 the conundrum that we have to address. It has to do with the appointment of judges. Right now, there is nothing you can do. If you have a corrupt judge on, on the bench, what do you do? Especially when it is a justice of the Supreme Court. 
High court, you can tolerate, even though it's wrong, because you know you have an appellate court. A court of appeal, you have the Supreme Court. But when you get to the Supreme Court, that's what uh, Justice Robert just was saying. When you get to the Supreme Court, whatever Supreme Court says is final. So what do you do? And that will be a prescription for anarchy. It was you who said justice must not only be done, but must be seen to have been done. In other words, it's not about this. Both the litigants and the public must be convinced that sagacity prevailed. In this case, it was a miscarriage of justice. Martina can get angry. His followers can get angry. And there might be a, a revolution. There might be a, a, there might be a crisis all over as a result of this judgment. Because the electoral law is clear. It's lucid. And that is why they went by the judge's summons. So the issue of jurisdiction does not even arise. Mm -hmm. Because jurisdiction is the fulcrum on which the adjudicating competence of the court rests. Okay. What is originating summons? You're interpreting the law, the way it is so constructed. Read or summons simply means you are coming to discuss. It's contentious. There is something contentious here. You did not participate in the May primaries. You went ahead and obtained the nomination form for the presidential primaries. You failed. The electoral law says you cannot, you are interdicted, you cannot participate in two, two nomination forms in the same election. What is there? Why wouldn't they go about originating summons? Okay. So, what is there? What is wrong with that? Oh, but about, because so we, that we, is the problem we have. And because we're running out of time, we no longer have time. But I don't know if you can hear me. Quickly, we don't have time. Yes, I can hear you. In a few words, how optimistic are you uh, about the 2023 general elections? We're 19 days away. Um, INEC, of course, would, uh, you would, as we'd all say, uh, has its job cut out for it. But then, um, looking at all of the things that have happened building up to this election, how optimistic are you? Well, right now, uh, I think uh, I'm a little bit worried. If we talk of INEC preparedness, good. Yes, I think uh, we'll give INEC, INEC kudos. It, it has done its best. Of course, there's room for improvement, no doubt about that. But a situation where losers will start running to courts and people will start circumventing the electoral act, because it's not just this. There are other, there are other uh, prohibitions in the electoral act. And somebody will just go in on voting day, prohibit, and run to court, and the court will come up with one uh, uh, stupid uh, 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 grounds to, to, to either endorse that, that ineptitude. So that is my worry, the courts. Because from what we are seeing right now, why INEC is striving, working hard to ensure that the results, a true reflection, is a referendum of the people. What the court is now doing is no. The result should not be a referendum, a reflection of the masses, the, the will of the masses. It should be a reflection of the will of a microscopic few. Because they are judges of the Supreme Court, I don't want to use certain languages. But I am highly disappointed in them. Highly disappointed. And I commend the two dissenting justices. On the issue of INEC, in summary, I can assure you that INEC is working hard to ensure a credible, free, free and transparent election. But the bane of this election will be our judiciary our judiciary. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed until then. When I want to say thank you, Upanabong Kontara is a former uh, advisor to the governor of River State Governor, Yesen Wiki, and he's also a public affairs analyst. Always a pleasure to have you join us. Thank you. All right, and that's the show tonight. We want to thank you for being part of the conversation, but don't forget, February 25 is the day that we all have been waiting for. I know that you have your PVCs. Make sure that you vote and make the right choice. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening.